I debated whether going to uh, uh, the straight program of intermed versus the regular program where you would take an undergraduate degree of four to five years and before going to medicine. But I decided that I wanted to, I was sure of medicine and I wanted to get here as quickly as possible. So. It is known that the path to becoming a doctor is a long one. In the Philippines alone, it takes at least nine years after graduating from high school to become a fully licensed physician. But what if there was a faster way? What if you could go straight into medical school from high school? Alright, hello. This is my friend Sean. We both graduated from the same high school back in 2014 with the hopes of pursuing careers in medicine. However, whereas I'm still due to graduate in 2023, Sean is a little bit further on in the timeline. Graduated in the year 2021. So what's the secret to becoming a doctor at such a young age? Well, the answer is an accelerated medicine program. So in this video, I'll be covering what accelerated med programs are, how to apply for them, and what it's like once you're in them. Now, the idea of an accelerated medicine program has been around for quite some time. You need only look at the UK, where it's quite normal for many high school students to graduate from high school, enter medical school right after, and after six years, come out with their medical degrees. Even the US has its own similar program called BSMD, where you enter medical school after two years of undergrad. And the Philippine Accelerated Medical School programs follow a similar mold in that you spend the first two years taking all the pre-med subjects that are prerequisites for medical school before entering med proper and taking all the requisite classes. Technically, you can earn your MD within six years, but due to how the Philippine medical education system is structured, you are required to take a mandatory internship before taking the boards and becoming a fully licensed physician. At the time I'm making this video, there are currently three available accelerated medicine programs here in the Philippines. The Intermed program from the UP College of Medicine, the BS Human Biology program from DLSU, and the most recently, the Leap Med program from UST. All the programs are fundamentally similar in that the first two years of the program are spent learning all the college level courses that are prerequisites for medical school covering biology, chemistry, and physics, which will prepare the students for the mental rigor of the medical program. However, there are differences between the programs that could affect your decision on which program you end up joining. UP's Intermed program is unique among these accelerated medicine programs in that it requires its students to sign a return service agreement. Now, I won't get into the specifics about the, what the return service agreement entails, but basically, it requires the students to serve a minimum number of years here in the Philippines in exchange for their subsidized tuition. And if they violate this contract, they face a huge monetary fine. I talk about this more in my medical school scholarships video. So if you want to learn the specifics of that, make sure to check that out after this video. On top of that, the hospital where the student does his internship year at is prescribed by the school as opposed to being able to go wherever they want in the other two programs. For DLSU's Accelerated Medicine program, what makes theirs unique is that the first two years of the program are spent in the Manila campus while the med proper years are spent in the Health Science Institute in Cavite. Now, this may become a logistical problem because, for example, if you are residing originally in Manila and you don't really want to go to Cavite, that may become a big hindrance for you once you end up transferring to their medical school. Another unique aspect of their program is that after the third year, which is technically first year med if you just transferred normally into their school, you are given the option to transfer to another medical school if you find that it's not for you. So you just end up graduating with your BS Human Biology degree, and then you move on to whatever medical school you choose. Downside of this is that you end up repeating first year, so you kind of get penalized by one year for that, but you're still technically one year ahead of your fellow graduates from high school. USD's Leap Med program, in comparison to the first two programs I talked about, is quite straightforward in that you spend your first two years learning all the pre-med courses, and then you go straight into USD Med, after those two years and just pursue the four-year degree as normal before taking your internship right after. So now that we know the basics of what these accelerated medicine programs are, how does one get into these accelerated medicine programs? Well, the application process is relatively similar for each and every single one of them in that you have to take the college entrance exam for each of these schools. So for UP, it's the UPCAT, for DLSU, it's the DCAT, and for USD is the step. And based on the scores of the applicants on those exams, the committee will shortlist the applicants and make an initial cut for those who will be interviewed. The number of applicants they accept varies per school, but based on what I could find online, you be shortlist the top 100 applicants, 50 boys and 50 girls, and interviews them before shortlisting them further to the top 20 boys and top 20 girls, and those are the students who are accepted into the internment program. For USD, they accept more students shortlisting a total of 500 students 
from which 220 are interviewed and from there, a total of 90 of the top applicants are accepted into the LEAP Med program. So now that we've gone over the basics of what these accelerated medicine programs are and what it's like to apply to them, let's now go over Sean's experiences with being in the program itself and what it was like being in it from start to finish. It really depends on which high school you came from, which will determine how well you adjust into the program. Because like, I will definitely say, coming from our high school, where, you know, um, to be perfectly frank, you could get away by with your words. You can get away with your words or how you explain anything, right, back in high school. Here, you can't do that. You need to have substance in what you're saying. So a lot of it was rote memorization, stuff that we didn't really plan for or stuff that we didn't really think about back then. So it was quite hard for me at first. Um, but more than that, it was also hard for me to adjust coming from an all-boys school where eventually, you know, we're not in an exclusive all-boys school now. So there are different problems associated with, you know, um, other people. So stuff like that. I felt that we were very, very protected back then in high school. But uh, it was eye-opening, at least for me, where at that time, uh, if you didn't know, I, um, first year in LU1, I joined a lot of organizations. So I had seven at the time, and I was also part of the freshman council there, freshy council there. But like at the end of that year, I kind of regretted a lot of my decisions doing it because I wasn't ready for it. Uh, you should ease into it until you know your capabilities. But like if you rush through it, eventually you'll just be caught up into uh, all of the shenanigans of the people in the upper years where you can't even make your own decisions regarding things. So. That was a bit hard for me to take. But what's good about UP is that along with the freedom that you have to choose the orgs that you want to be in, there's also the freedom to say no to those things and to reassess and reevaluate these things. So that was good for me. It gave, I had the time to do it. Even you'd imagine in the intermed program, there's no time to be in orgs, there's no time to be in to do extracurriculars, but there's a lot of time in intermed and there's a lot of time in medicine. So it's just really about how we use our time and eventually how we reassess on if, if this is what we really want or not. No, um, actually that's the opposite, you know. So I, I want to correct like a bit of a misconception in terms of that. Like in intermed and in fact in med medical school, you're not forced to mature early. In fact, you're delayed maturity. That's how I would actually describe it because Unlike my peers who are earning, I'm not earning yet. I'm not doing those things where, I mean, of course I'm earning in terms of like, of course, maybe you have a side project, this and like that. But in terms of like having real world implications to your job or having that sort of pressure to be able to do in work, as well as to have these responsibilities to, you know, take over the bill of the house or to um, look for, uh, other opportunities as well those are limited because in terms of medicine you kind of like have a sure track right like when you're a doctor you're always going to be able to find work that's not going to be something that's going to be hard for you so in terms of maturity I actually do feel that we're delayed rather than accelerated and uh, I, I do still keep in touch with my friends from high school um, we talk almost every day Almost all of them have graduated already. Some of them are also taking medical school uh, somewhere else. But like for the ma vast majority of them, they already have uh, capital in which they can already uh, used to buy things for themselves, buy things for their family, prepare for maybe marriage or something. But like us, we don't have that. So uh, that's one thing that I want people to know when they enter into intermed or medical school is that you have to be prepared to feel that you're delayed in terms of your maturity like seeing patients um critical conditions seeing patients pass away you know those are that's a different type of maturity than lifestyle maturity or being able to we we would call it being able to live being able to do life right so yeah it's something to definitely think about whether to take the course or not in terms of social maturity i do agree that in terms of the people who took intermed, there is a difference in terms of maturity. So wh why do I say this? Um, 
for the people who eventually take medicine after a four-year course, most of them, at least in terms of statistics, no, they are less likely to quit because you already took four years to think about it. And then after that four years, you still decided to take medicine. Or after that five years or after how so long, you decided to take medicine. So you're still less likely to quit. Versus in intermed, as we said, right, we were 17, 16, 15 when we signed that contract. And when you eventually reach that first year of medicine, that LU3, and then sometimes you realize that this isn't what I wanted in my life. It's kind of hard because you're going to have to back out, but then you're what are you going to do? You're, you have to pay the RSA contract that, you know, so you, you feel stuck, you feel trapped, and, you know, eventually leads to mental health concerns. So it, it's definitely something that you really do see in the intermed population. But again, at the same time, you can't let this be a deterrent into your own self. If you feel that you are being immature, then you go and grow, right? You grow as a person. And that's, I think, the best part about being with other people, being with the um, I guess the lateral entrance. That's how we're, they, they're called in the college. So uh, people who join later would be lateral entrance. People who join from intermed would be direct entrance. So uh, mixing with the lateral entrance was really, really good for us because like, it really allowed us to see a perspective outside of what we were just exposed to. And it allowed us to just, you know, I guess think more than just ourselves. Because like in the first two years, you're always been touted that you're intermed, you're the cream of the crop, like this and like that. But once you reach the uh, LU3, no, you're not intermed cream of the crop. You're a UP College of Medicine student along with everyone else. You're on equal footing. So go and um, excel, right? So I really do, do feel that uh, we had a good batch of uh, lateral entrance. We, um, they were very, very nice, very, very kind, and um, it was not very hard to acclimatize with them. Back in LU2, there was this the gatekeeping course. We call it the gatekeeping course because it's the one that's most closely uh, similar to how they treat you in med school, and that's uh, biotherapy. I don't know if it's still the same now, because I think that teacher there gradu- uh, retired already, but like uh, during that time, it was the hardest class in the whole first two years of intermed and they would treat you like med school so like i had to adjust my study style in a way where instead of um studying just for the exam like you know we would cram like how how we wouldn't say here no you would study days before you would study and do uh spaced repetition all of those active recall and stuff yeah that was true then and that really helped me because when i went into lu3 I just had to kind of adopt that to all my classes. So, yeah. And as I said before, right, We you think that med students don't have a lot of time. Med students actually do have a lot of time. It's really not, <laughs> it's really not a concern. It, it, but like what you do with that time is what's important. So uh, you have to make sure not just to study, 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 but also to take care of yourself. And that's what I neglected during the first um, semester. I would... Uh, I, I would stop sports entirely during that first semester and that actually took a toll on my grades but like after I started to exercise as well as I would study that's when things got better to be per- perfectly honest um, it's less about the course and it's more about the country <laughs> so uh, yes yeah if I had the chance to do it all over again I would have left so i would have really tried hard to leave because like the whole course itself is really really solid in terms of how it exposes you to the realities of this country so um one one thing that's always been said about pgh or any other government hospital which you can intern in is that the patients that you see there come from all walks of life and the patients that you see there you get to see an abundance of them so we're never short of patients we always see um, people from different circumstances people who have been wrongfully put into this position because of poor circumstances and all and every year as the years go by you usually have three choices one is you keep staying the course you just want to you know maybe hopefully give them a better chance two 
you would rebel and go definitely all out against the government or three you would just give up and uh just accept that this is already the system that's already being in place or oh, sorry and four or you would quit so these types of realities you get to see not just you don't really get to see them in your first few years but you get to see them once you're a clerk or once you're an intern so you're going to be really be seeing those things and you're going to feel in yourself that why can't i change the system or why am i so helpless or why am i so powerless so these types of things are the ones that weigh heavily on me if i had the choice whether if if it was just limited back to whether to take intermed or to take a four year degree i would still take intermed i would still take it because um just the just the gift of being able to see these these things a lot earlier really allows you to shape what you want to do in your life i wouldn't trade that but in terms of if you're looking for having additional skills or having additional exposure outside of medicine then go take a different course don't take intermed because what i would regret in terms of me taking intermed was that i didn't get to experience other things or other cultures outside of ubu manila culture For anyone who wants to take into intermed, I get that you guys are going to be you know, 15, 16, 17, 18. You guys are going to be really young, and it's going to be really hard to you know like think about it. In fact, I was talking to some people before, uh, like a few days ago, and they were saying that they had uh, like choice paralysis because, of course, those people who take intermed, they're really really smart. <laughs> so yeah. those those people, they have a lot of choices to choose from and what to do. So they get choice paralysis. And I would just echo what people say. If you're really, really, really sure you want to take into medicine, then go ahead, take it. In fact, you can go take leap med in UST, or you can go and take human biology in Asal, the fast track courses, you know. But if you're not sure, and if you really don't know what you want in life, don't take it. By all means, don't take it, because the seven years is a really big commitment, and. The fact that it is delayed maturity will really take a toll on you. It's something that I wrestled with. I've wrestled with for a few months, but eventually came into terms with it because I knew that this is where I wanted to be. So that's what I would want to say to anyone thinking about applying. So I hope you guys learned a lot from Sean's experiences, and I hope his experiences inspire you in your own pursuit of a career in medicine. And if you want to learn more about what it's like to apply to medical school here in the Philippines, you can check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.